Hey, this is Lee Gerstmann, and I'm going to do something that's a little bit different than what people ordinarily do. A lot of times people will read a whole book, and then they'll do a review of it. I've decided I'm going to do something not like that for this review. It's going to be the review so far of what I've read of a book. Because a lot of times when you read a book, you find you might like it after you're all done, but when you're at the halfway point or close to that, you might think to yourself, well, is it worth continuing to read? So you're impressions and feelings about the book might be different after you read the whole thing, but during the time you read it, you have certain impressions, because after you read a certain amount, you think, oh, this is how I feel about this, or this is how I feel about that. So the book that I'm in the middle of reading, and I'm pretty much halfway into it, is... John Green, The Fault in Our Stars. Now, I never really read anything of John Green before this. I've heard of him, but this is the first time that I started to read one of his books. Now, I'm the kind of guy who's more into either very surreal fiction, like... Thomas Pynchon and Gravity's Rainbow, or James Joyce and Finnegan's Wake, or midpoint between surreal and normal, like Kurt Vonnegut and Breakfast of Champions, or Gore Vidal and Myra Breckenridge. But I'm also into more regular conventional fiction too, like Robert Penn Wallace, All the King's Men, which really isn't completely traditional, but you can understand it, or even Jay McInerney and his book, um... Bright Lights, Big City, which aren't really, like, completely traditional, but they're they're close enough. But I also like Nathaniel Hawthorne, House of Seven Gables, and I like, you know, um, Alice Hoffman, Property Of. Those are maybe, like, more conventional novels, but they're with some interesting moments in them. They're not necessarily completely just traditional without interest to them. So, that's the thing. When I read this book so far of John Green, and this thing that says Pokeball, no, that's not Pokemon. You can't go to Pokemon and try to get Poke Bowl. You could try. I have no idea, but yeah. Um, so far, this book seems to be still in the process of getting into the plot. The plot, I don't want to give away a lot of the plot because it's a lot of... I mean, why read it if I explain too much, but... There's um, characters who are with some physical ailments and they go to uh, get help in centers. Like, they go to what you would call, like, um, like meetings where, where it's support groups. And one lady, she's 
recovering from some cancer and she meets this fellow who has like one leg because he had like cancer or, or some something that caused his leg to need to be amputated and he's trying to be her boyfriend and she's hesitant and you're not sure whether it's totally because she doesn't like him or whether or not she's just not wanting to hurt him but that part of the story seems a little bit like I'm, I'm not going to use the word pretentious but sort of cliche like you kind of know that this is one of those typical stories that might be like okay she doesn't want him now but maybe by the end of the book they're going to be together I don't know if that's the case but a lot of books like that are written like that and her name is Hazel and he calls her by her first and middle name Hazel Grace all the time which to me is also kind of an irritating pretentious move but the main part of the story is that they are going to go to Amsterdam to meet this one author who apparently wrote this novel and at the end of the novel it didn't make everything clear and Hazel wants to find out what happened to the characters after the novel was over so her wish because she's got cancer and she's eligible for having a wish like in a make-a-wish foundation she opts to meet this author who decides that he's going to be able to talk with her and she's kind of skeptical or whatnot but oh well um I, I don't know whether or not there's going to be some real big revelation as far as why he didn't make the book more conclusive or whether or not it's just a part of her imagination. But I would say after about 150 or so pages of the 300 to have her not quite there at that author's house yet seems to me like it's taking a long time. So it's either going to get really, really good, kind of like how Gillian Flynn's Gone Girl, after the first part, which was about 200 pages, after you get through that, it's really, really good from that point on. Or whether or not, you might as well just stop the book now because it's not going to get better. I, I have no idea. All I know is that, so far, my impressions are... The writing is getting a little bit more interesting as far as the flow, but it's not necessarily so far getting past enough of an interest level for me to think that it's going to be awesome from this point on. But we'll see. I am going to finish reading it. It's not bad. It's just so far halfway through, it's just not what you would call really like nothing's actually really happened yet it's all like going to a concert and hearing the people tuning their guitars and the show didn't actually start yet but anyway the fault in our pokey bowl stars ha 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 just kidding uh i'll get back to you when it's finished and then i'll let you know my conclusion but this is my review of the first half of the book. All right, take care. Bye.